I'm just noticing alongside one of our fields here, this is canola, or this is what's supposed to be canola. And it might be hard to pick up on the camera here. You'll notice nothing going on. Completely bare, except for some weeds. I think this is supposed to be canola here. Nothing, nothing. I would say for about 125 feet. And then, pow, we have a crop of canola, which is a little bit damaged, but it is growing. This is going to make a crop. So you ask yourself, what happened there? What's going on with that patch? You can almost see the line there, bare all the way over to about here. Well, as you can, I don't know if you can see that, but these canola plants are still being devoured by flea beetles. Look at the damage on these leaves. And with this rain, these plants have actually started to be able to grow out of it. Grow out of the damage to kind of keep ahead of the bug pressure. This strip here is bare because of that yard there. My brother actually sprayed this field twice for bugs. It was dry, like we we're in drought conditions. The plant germinated all right. And it could only grow so much because of the dryness. So it sat there and wave after wave after wave of bug pressure hit our fields to the point where it was just chewing it up and the plant couldn't grow because without the moisture. So basically through that extreme heat, the bugs were coming and taking a chomp on the plant and the canola was literally disintegrating in front of our eyes. It was quite the sight to see. So we sprayed the field to control the bugs. There's seed treatment on this field, but for the seed treatment to work, the bugs actively have to take that bite, ingest that uh, product to kill them off and wave after wave and without the plant actively able to grow, it just completely, as you can see, stripped the, uh, the plants completely dead. So I had asked Adam, I mean, I'm not gonna tell him not to spray the field because of my bees. That's not in the cards. I said, okay, just allow me a little bit of a buffer strip. And he actually left me a full width of the sprayer, which is quite generous. I was thinking maybe just half the sprayer, but as you can see, the spray works, and this is going to be a bare spot. I think actually, I, Adam complained just a little bit about it, and was like, well, how about we use this as a check strip, just to prove that all the effort and investment you put into the rest of the field paid off. This kind of shows you that we are in dire straits, and you made the right decisions there. So actually, I might come in here with a cultivator after he's done spraying that field for herbicide and use this as one of my little pollinator patches and grow sunflowers here. Just make use of this little corner that got stripped by mother nature. But this is kind of what I'm talking about. This is what I'm preaching continuously. We can't tell farmers not to spray, not to use all the products available to them to be able to manage our crops. Otherwise, instead of managing a profitable, brilliant crop out there, it could very easily just be stripped in front of them and just cause complete devastation and grief. As a beekeeper, I have a lot of risk as presented to me when he comes around with that sprayer with insecticide because that drift could wipe this yard out. But at the exact same time, the risk for him not growing that crop presents me with the risk of not being able to tap into all those flowers to be able to produce me this massive crop in which I, you know, base my entire livelihood on. If he had to resow, that'd be back to barley. And it wouldn't matter how many boxes I had in this yard, there'd be no honey in there and all this work for naught. So we have to kind of find that balance. The communication between us is very important. I can't tell him not 
to apply the products onto this field. But what I can do is suggest better, maybe more appropriate uses of those products. So what did we do here? We use maybe a lower residue insecticide. I mean, the bees aren't in that field, but they're flying over the field. Uh, the bees are beside the field. So, you know, more of a contact type spray. I asked him to spray in the evening. Actually, because we've been so windy, he's been only been able to spray in the evening. And thanks to GPS, we've, he's actually been spraying all night just to get the products down, which actually is better for uh, the effectiveness of these insecticides. You get that long acting res residue throughout the night and then it burns off in the morning, becomes ineffective. So it gets a better uh, treatment by spraying in the evening throughout the night, uh, controls the bugs more adequately and pr protects my apiary as a bit of a buffer. You provided me a buffer, like a turn on and off the nozzle type buffer, which is quite generous. I don't expect uh, many farmers to do that. But if I'm as a beekeeper willing to put my hives beside a planted canola field so close like this, I'm assuming a bit of that risk also. Not many farmers would turn off the booms like that. But any rate, that's just kind of what I'm preaching. We have to make sure that we maintain the relationship between us because if they aren't actively able to control their problems, we're in effect not able to collect a honey crop ourselves. We have that relationship, the farmer and the beekeeper, that we have to maintain. We have to find that common ground. And it's just a little bit of communication, understanding between the two. That's, that's so very important to both our livelihoods.